What's up guys, Dave Searle here, and today I'm gonna to give you a video about what I carry when I go ski mountaineering. So we're in Chamonix today and the weather is pretty awful outside. It's been raining super high even though it's the start of February. Earlier in the week we were skiing powder. It was pretty good, I'd say. Sorry if you missed it. And now the rain snow limit is shot super high. Not great. So recently I've been doing some lectures in Chamonix about glacial travel and ski mountaineering and part of the lecture is what you need to carry in your bag. I thought this would be a great topic for a video because a lot of people can't make it to those talks in Chamonix. If you want to, I'm running them roughly every month during the winter. I might do them more frequently if there's more people that's interested. Uh, and I typically publish the dates on my Instagram and my Facebook page, so make sure you follow me on the links below. So talking about what we need in our bag, this obviously isn't an exhaustive list of everything and sometimes it changes, but hopefully it gives you a little bit of an insight as to what I carry and how I approach packing my bag to go out ski mountaineering. There's three main factors that I'm considering when I'm packing my bag. I need to make sure that everything that's in there is useful and functional. I need to make sure that it's nice and light so I'm keeping the weight down and off my back. And I also need to make sure that it's gonna last and it's gonna work and it's not gonna break whilst I'm out there. So I'm always choosing things and trying to tweak things and make sure that everything is light, durable and functional. Those three things are really important. So I've got my ski mountaineering bag here. So I thought, why don't we just get everything out and I'll show you what I've got. So let's talk about the bag to start with. This is a Solomon QST30. Uh, there used to be a slightly bigger one, which I actually preferred, but this one's still totally fine. Uh, most of my ski mountaineering around Chamonix, I'll be using a 30 litre bag. Some days, if we've got to stay over in a hut or something, I might use something bigger, but typically 30 is enough to get all your ski mountaineering kit in. So let's start with the outside pocket. And in here, I've got my shovel blade. Now this is a BCA Shax Tech uh, shovel blade which is works with my, uh, my ice axe. So I'll show you how that works in a second. In the top pocket here, I've got, this is a GPS unit it's called the Garmin InReach. This thing is great, it's got a tracking feature so I can turn it on and leave it on for the day and it sends my location to a website so my girlfriend or my parents or the people that I'm working for can see where I am. Uh, but also I can text and uh, contact yes, the uh, emergency services with this device. So it's really good to have a secondary form of communication. Mobile phones work, but they don't always work. So having something that you can send a message or talk to people in the outside world is really useful. Also in the top pocket, I've got a set of goggles. Uh, I might already be wearing these. I might need two pairs if it's bad weather. Okay, I might also have extra bits of filmmaking kit. So maybe I've got my GoPro in there or I don't know, some lens filters for my camera or some extra food. Okay, let's look inside. What have we got in here? I might keep my GPS device in that top in the inside top pocket so it's not kind of rattling around. Maybe I've got my uh, my car keys clipped to the inside of there as well. So I've got a spare pair of gloves. It's really important that you're bringing a spare pair of gloves with you. I've had it before where I've dropped a glove and if you've not got a spare pair that you can immediately grab, things can turn from bad to worse pretty quickly, especially when there's a lot of wind or fresh snow being blown around. So always bring a spare pair of gloves. And depending on what time of the year, depends on how thick they are. These are quite thick ones, but maybe in the spring something a bit lighter might be okay. I've got my ice axe inside my bag. The reason for that is typically I'm starting my ski mountaineering day from the Aiguille de Midi in Chamonix, and nothing annoys me more than getting an ice axe poked in my face when I'm in the lift queue. So do everybody a favor, put it inside your bag in the morning, 
and if you need it out when you get out onto the midi arete, take it out and clip it to the outside of your bag then. But if it fits inside, which it should do, then stick it inside. This also works as a shovel handle, as I said before. So it clips in like that. And I've got a basic shovel. I, I can also change the ice axe head in, into a handle. And for me, that's, that's great. Uh, it saves carrying an extra tube of metal around that has no other use other than digging somebody out of an avalanche, which hopefully, hopefully, shouldn't happen. Obviously, if I'm taking more than one ice axe or I'm doing something that's more technical, I might need to bring something different, in which case I'd just bring a different type of shovel. Uh, but I use this for most of my ski guiding. It works really well. I can cut steps, I can use it as an anchor, and it works pretty well as an ice axe as well. So I would really recommend these. So next item in here is a rope. This is a 35 meter uh, triple rated BL rope that I've stuffed into a stuff sack. Obviously it depends what you're doing. Some days I need a much longer rope. So for example, I might have a 60 meter rope if I'm doing something like the Cosmics couloir. So my friend will also have a 60 meter rope or whoever I'm skiing with will have the other one. And doing a nice long abseil to get into the couloir is really useful. 35 meter single rope is quite useful if we're doing any kind of climbing. Uh, you've still got the dynamic properties of the rope, but I might end up carrying a lighter weight 30 meter kind of rad line type rope. Putting it in a stuff sack is a really good idea. It just means that in a crevasse rescue scenario, I've already got a knot in, in here. I can clip that straight into my anchor. So it's one less job to do is to uncoil the rope coil it and then throw it in. I've got this, I can clip it straight into the anchor, throw the bag into the crevasse where the person is and either get them to clip to the loop that's at the bottom here so there's a knot inside, get them to clip to it and I can pull them out or I can abseil down and give them first aid or help or whatever they need. Uh, so definitely worth thinking about getting a stuff sack for your rope. Avalanche probe. Now You'll notice it's not in the uh, the sort of stuff sack that it comes in. It doesn't have anything around it as well. Some people like to put, I don't know, a ski strap or something around it. If you need it, you need it quickly and you need to get it out quickly. And that means you don't want to be wrestling with a stuff sack or a sleeve for it. And you also don't want to be trying to get a ski strap off it. Just keep it like that. Shove it into your bag somewhere that you can pull it out really quickly and easily. It just means you'll save those extra few seconds. I also might bring a small group shelter, depending on the objective. Now, if, for example, there's a lot of snow and I'm going somewhere quite mellow, I might not bother taking this. Um, and I might just rely on the fact that I could dig a snow cave or a snow pit or something to kind of get shelter. But if I'm going somewhere that I feel a little bit more exposed, it might be good to have something that I can just make a, a bit of shelter around people. And this honestly doesn't weigh hardly anything and I can compress it down a lot smaller than this as well. Uh, this is a two-person two boffy bag. I think it's made by, by Rab. So yeah, really good piece of kit and I've used it on a couple of occasions, so. Okay, in here as well, I've got the BL Escaper. Uh, I used it the other day to abseil off a train bridge but I don't use it that much but it is quite a useful thing to to have it just means that you can do much longer abseils you know rather than just being able to do 15 16 meter abseils I can do a 35 meter abseil which is actually useful sometimes uh, also in here I've got a 21 centimeter ice screw so I guess I didn't really talk about what I have on my harness so I've probably got my crevasse rescue kit. I've got an ice screw and I've probably got a lanyard on my harness. Um, and those items, they'll basically either be clipped to my harness or probably more likely is clipped to my shoulder strap of my bag. I find that that makes it a lot easier uh, to get at things in an emergency. I can take my bag off, I can put it down, um, I can put it down on the ground and I can actually get to uh, the items that I need much quicker and much easier. 
I typically only have one eye screw on my harness and keep the other one in the bag. It's very rare that I need access to two eye screws really quickly that I wouldn't be able to get it out of my bag. And I don't like to have too much stuff kind of like jangling around and hanging off me. If you fall over and land on one of these, it's pretty painful and the long ones tend to kind of get caught on things. So I keep the long one in my bag. I also keep with it uh, an, an Abolikov threader. Uh, also with that, you probably need some tap. Uh, this is some um, six mil Kevlar tap. I think it's about five meters. Useful for making abseil anchors, but also you can use it in certain crevasse rescue scenarios. Uh, here I've got a first aid kit and repair kit. So this has got stuff in it that would be good in maybe a major bleed or fixing small little issues with your health, but not really, you know, I don't want to go overkill with my first aid kit. It's still got to be light and functional. So thinking about what you would actually be able to treat in a, in a situation that probably the most important thing is to be able to put compression onto a major bleed. If somebody's got a broken arm or leg, then you've probably got enough bits and pieces here that you can make a splint or at least you're not gonna be able to repair them in, in a way that they're gonna be skiing again. Also got a knife in here and various little tools and things, um, Allen keys, stuff like that, um, screwdrivers for fixing bindings. Next thing is I've got a pair of skins and even if I'm doing just a really basic run down the Valley Blanche, um, which I would class as ski mountaineering because you're gonna be on a glacier you're gonna be wearing a harness and you may need to use crampons to get down the arete as well. I would always carry a pair of skins. If you need to climb back up to get to somebody, you don't wanna be sidestepping or walking. If you walk, it's dangerous. There's a chance that you could fall in a crevasse. There's more chance that you could fall into a crevasse yourself. So you need a pair of skins if you're gonna be skiing on a glacier. And by that means you, pop, you need a touring binding on your ski. But yeah, bring a pair of skins, especially if you're skiing on a glacier. The next item would be maybe a lightweight pair of crampons. Now, obviously if I'm gonna be doing some harder kind of climbing objective, I'd bring something a bit more beefy than these small Petzl crampons, but actually I find these work really well for most sort of ski mountaineering objectives. And having a pair of crampons means that you can also climb out of a crevasse a lot easier. So if you fall in, you need somebody to kind of like belay you out, you can stick your crampons on and it's gonna be much easier to get out. So this is actually a pair of insulated shorts and people laugh at me for these, but actually I think they're really good. You can zip them on and off um, over the top of your ski pants. It just gives you a bit of extra insulation if it's a bit colder than you think it is. And it, in an emergency situation, if you've gotta be sitting around and kind of waiting for somebody, these are gonna keep you warm. I've got a small water bottle here. Now this is the winter, so I typically get through around 500 milliliters of water a day when it's cold, but when it's warm, I'm definitely gonna be carrying more than that. So that's about everything that I've got in my ski mountaineering bag. Other things that may not be in there are my spare layers. I may be wearing everything in the morning because uh, it's quite cold maybe waiting for the lift. Uh, and those spare layers will then go into the bag. And obviously, as I said before, this isn't an exhaustive list of everything that you need. This is just kind of what goes into my bag on a day-to-day -day basis. One thing I didn't really mention is food, and that's probably quite a personal thing. You should be able to work out what you need in terms of calories and what you like to eat when you're in the mountains. I find that a big sandwich doesn't really work very well. I tend to find it's really heavy and takes too long to eat. So I generally end up bringing loads of sort of snacky things. So that's about it from this video and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you've got an idea for another video that's similar, then just write a comment below. If you wanna find out more or get in touch about mountain guiding, then just go to my website. The link is in the description. And yeah, I hope you have some great ski mountaineering and I hope wherever you're skiing, you're gonna get some good days out soon. Cheers guys.